fortunate enough to be a parent or indeed a grandparent, you will know that nothing is more important than your child or your children and their health and their education. And there is an announcement from the government concerning all of the above. Let's turn to Conservative MP, Education Secretary Nadim Zahawi, who joins me now. Morning, Secretary of State. What is it uh, the government's making fund of funding available for this morning? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Yes, uh, so working with NHS England, uh, we are making £8 million available to uh, secondary schools, uh, special schools, um, alternative provision schools, uh, so that the administration side of the vaccination programme, we want to make sure we continue to vaccinate 12 to 15 year olds. 50% of them have had at least one dose. They're now eligible for their second dose. Of course, 16 and 17 year olds are eligible for their booster jab and it's money that we essentially will give to schools to help you know with the administration uh, so that the school uh, teams from the NHS can go in and, and do their job and continue our brilliant uh, vaccination program. We're also announcing today uh, after sending out 350,000 uh, CO2 monitors um, last year uh, that around um, uh, 9,000 um, air purifiers will be sent out to those schools that can't mitigate in their classroom. The good news is that when, uh, you know, and I was criticised for this, the Labour Party said, why don't you just buy 350,000 air purifiers? I said, no, that's, that's, that's I'm a steward of public money here. I, I bought CO2 monitors, 25 million pounds worth, sent them out to all the schools. They can then monitor their CO2 in the classroom. The data from that, and we're releasing the survey today, shows that the majority, so 94 plus percent, uh, can actually cope uh, very easily without needing any air purifiers. But our modelers, and I have to tell you, I'm very proud of them because their modelers were very accurate, thought we'd get a need about 8,000 air purifiers. Uh, that number's come up just a, just a bit ahead of 8,000. So about uh, you know, almost 9,000 just under. So we, we've, we've bought another 1,000 to take it up to 9,000. And we're sending those out to about 1,200 settings around the country so they can you know, help with uh, air purification where they can't mitigate right. uh, you know, for ventilation. Which is obviously tremendous news, but you're aware how many schools there are in the United Kingdom, Secretary of State? Yes, of course. There's 24,300 plus schools. And you're talking there's about over 300,000 classrooms. Yeah. Yes, so that, that's the whole point. I was point. just going to say, so, so, so there's that many schools. I hadn't worked out the classrooms. I did have a number of the schools. And you know, credit for what you've done, but we're not really covering everything here, are we? Isn't there a danger things might slip through the net, Secretary of State? So this, this is why I was trying to explain it, but obviously I did a crap job of explaining it to you just now. Um, I'm sure right, I wasn't the, listening. I'm sure there, the, the, no, the, the there, fault there lies are, there are, in the recipient, I'm sure. Right, not at all. There are 300,000 plus classrooms, right? Dust so what I did was... The education Secretary there, but do go on. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, um, it, 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 there are 300,000 plus classrooms, right? right? So what I did was I sent out 350,000 ah, CO2 monitors. Got it. Right. That allowed us then to model and say, right, got it. Uh, the majority can actually ventilate easily and are doing a great job following the guidelines in, on ventilation. Got it. A very small minority, and we modelled this, which I was, I was tongue-in-cheek saying to you, our modellers did a brilliant job, Got and it. I'm you know, very proud. Not all models uh, you know, were, were as accurate, but nevertheless, my modellers did a brilliant job. They said, Secretary of State, we're going to need about 8,000. That number is now 9,000. Uh, the deadline for schools to apply was last Monday. It came in just above 8,000. Uh, so that's what we are delivering uh, in terms of air purifiers. So if you take, it's like a funnel, right? You've got 350,000 CO2 monitors. And the, what it comes down to is about you know, 9,000 air purifiers that we're getting out uh, to those classrooms that can't easily ventilate. Let's move to, thank you for, for that, Secretary. Let's move to other stories and other headlines. Front page of one newspaper, entire cabinet would back a tax hike delay. This is the proposed increase in national insurance. I stress that word again, entire cabinet. So you're part of that merry band, Secretary of State? Well, n no, because let me tell you why uh, we are introducing national ins insurance contribution, right? It's really important, this. £36 billion pounds is going to be raised by that. Now, the highest earners, and that's 14% of the highest earners, will pay half of that, 
36 of, of that of that contribution uh, the NIC contribution the lowest paid so 6.1 million people the lowest paid will pay nothing so it's as progressive as we can make it why is it important because you and I both know we've been around politics for decades right that progressive you know, su successive governments have tried to deal with this and have failed and actually have failed the elderly because this uh, unsustainable system that we have at the moment has broken many a human being in old age because they can't afford the, the uh, social care that they need. So this Prime Minister, again, another big decision, but he's got it right on this. Uh, the, the other side of that is, of course, the cost of living that we have to deal with. And we are putting £12 billion to work over this year and next year. Um, to make sure that, you know, for example, local government is getting half a billion pounds because they know those families that need real help with the utility bills. We're delivering that. Those who can't, you know, who are struggling with their council tax, that's another okay. uh, uh, just over 600, billion, 600 million. So, so were there to uh, be a delay, with, with you saying he's got it right on that, another decision by the PM, he'd have got it wrong if there were to be a delay on NR, national insurance. There won't be a delay then, Secretary of State. I, I don't think uh, we would be, uh, you know, doing ourselves uh, a, a, any favours in delaying what we need to do is make sure that we deliver that 36 billion into uh, right. the social care system that this Prime Minister is, is determined to fix, as well as, of course, into health care. And it's as progressive as we can make it. As I just said, the, the, the highest paid 14% will pay half of it, and 6.1 million of the lowest paid will pay nothing for it. OK. Coming to uh, another couple of uh, matters. I know a little bit about your background. I remember you once told me how, as a young boy, you managed to fall over and put a spike through your leg that didn't stop bleeding. What I'm not aware of uh, is your faith. There is a note on your profile that you are of a Muslim background, but you don't necessarily practice. Assuming you are, how comfortable or easy is it being someone of a Muslim background in the Conservative Party, given what Nusrat Ghani have alle has alleged? So I, I s tweeted out that you know, Nusrat is a uh, valued colleague, a, 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 an extremely uh, effective parliamentarian, and if she makes such a serious allegation, then it's only right that um, this should be looked at thoroughly. The Prime Minister spoke to Nusrat uh, last night and has asked the Cabinet Office to look at this is a very serious allegation. I've been in the party um, since the uh, 80s. Um, I've grown up in this party. I've been a volunteer, a activist, a councillor for 12 years in Wandsworth, a member of parliament, a minister. I have not experienced anything like that. We had an inquiry into Islamophobia conducted by Professor Singh that um, uh, looked at a lot of these issues. We're overhauling our systems in the party. I'm proud of what we've done on uh, uh, this subject and on anti-Semitism, of course. I'm proud of what, what I'm doing in education on anti-Semitism as well uh, and making sure universities sign up to the international definition of uh, anti-Semitism. Um, so a lot of work has taken place, but Nusra has made some very serious allegations. The chief whip has come out and said, look, um, uh, he categorically denies this and he thinks it's defamatory. I think it's only right that the Cabinet Office look at this. In Nusrat's own statement, to be fair to her, she says you know, it could be people uh, who have said this who aren't even members of the Conservative Party. So there's a lot of detail that we need to uncover on this. And it's only right that the Cabinet Office take this on and uh, you know, investigate it swiftly. Potentially, how ugly might this be for the Prime Minister, Mr Zahawi? Well, I think the Prime Minister has taken this seriously all uh, throughout this um, uh, situation, my understanding is uh, when uh, this uh, arose two years ago, he met with Nusrat, he then wrote to her uh, and asked her to put in a formal complaint. Um, we now understand from her statement why she didn't do that. Uh, he's now, I think, um, delivered what I think uh, is the right thing, which is the Cabinet Office, a senior civil servant, looking at this. Nusrat, I, th I urge her, and I would back her in putting her evidence forward uh, to that uh, inquiry and for them to look at it swiftly. Uh, we're one team and we need to make sure that, that you know, colleagues feel safe and feel valued and appreciated. And there is no room in my party for racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, none at all. It's unacceptable and it will not happen in my party. Last couple of questions, noting your time spent as Vaccines Minister prior to becoming Education Secretary. It is reported that Wales could recruit NHS workers from England who lose their jobs because they refuse to be jabbed. Welsh First Minister Mark Drayford saying he would not rule out hiring unvaccinated staff from across the border. How much of a loss could that be to the NHS in England? So I think that anyone working with the most vulnerable and people going into hospital tend to be you know, extremely vulnerable, have a duty of care. Uh, to uh, protect those people in their care, which is why you know, I'm very proud that over nine in ten 
of the 1.2 million full-time equivalents in the NHS have been vaccinated. Since we announced this uh, 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 policy of mandatory vaccination, there was 100,000 who were still unvaccinated. That's now down to 70,000. Uh, surgeons have to get vaccinated for hep hepatitis uh, for them to practice it's a i think it's a duty of care issue here you know, far too many you know, families have had their loved ones infected in hospital uh with uh covid so i think it's really important that we 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 continue on this drive and i hope those numbers reduce even further and then the same has happened with adult social care where we put additional support okay. for the system to cope with this and last question on vaccines how wise or otherwise is it for the bbc question time show to have a special on those who are not vaccinated and invite them into the studio for that special next month in February. Is that a right decision by the BBC? Well, I hope all those who are vaccine hesitant, um, uh, I think if that's what they mean, then that's that's a, that's actually a, a good thing because you can share the evidence, you can have a, a proper uh, debate. I, I will have, I hope, experts in the panel, uh, you know, people like uh, Jonathan Van Tam or Chris Whitty or June Rain or Professor Wei Shen. These are, you know, we are blessed with the world's experts on vaccine. We've administered, you know, 36 million boosters uh, on top of the you know, billions of vaccines that have been administered around the world. This is a very safe vaccine. We know but, but people that 90 percent it, it could it could underscore the claims. Bill Gates is this nonsensical claims that it's all a global plot. Bill Gates is trying to control us. If it were not to be handled correctly, Secretary of State, would you agree? Well, which is which is why I said it's the vaccine hesitant, not the anti-vaxxers who 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 you know basically you know, deal in conspiracy theories and, and this sort of mad mumbo jumbo, as the Prime Minister called it. I hope they don't go in that direction to the BBC. So it needs a JVT. It needs a Chris. It, it it needs a Nadim Zahawi, and you 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 are a friend to that show. It needs someone like you on the show. Just to remind your listeners, 90% of those in ICU fighting for their lives are unvaccinated. That is just heartbreaking. And I hope those people who are hesitant, who will go now and get their vaccination because it is not too late. I'm grateful as ever for your time. Good luck with that initiative in our classrooms. Nadine Zahawi, Education Secretary, appearing.